What up, Ubers? What's going on? Another day in paradise. Up over here. And you know what? I I noticed something that I wanted to talk about a couple of times. And then I just I just forget to record about it. Uh, but there is a there has been a targeting system change, at least that I'm aware of. This might have happened a while ago. Uh, this is something that most people are even typically going to notice unless you are running Chrome. Specifically Chrome. Uh, or anybody else that's going to have a random uh, Beast Hunter-like effect, which is exactly what Chrome has. Uh, because the reason I say that is if Chrome's ability goes off, it's pointless to throw Beast Hunter. So as soon as the wave starts, you want to check those mobs to see if Chrome procced any chest drops. Uh, if he did... Cool, go ahead and finish off that wave and try to get as many kills as you can with the rogue that has the highest bonus and all the items to, or all the gear to have a higher chance to get items upon killing enemies. So you're, you're maxing out your capabilities there. Because remember, every mob can drop two chests. You can steal one and you can get one by killing the mob, right? So one stolen, one's from a kill. Right, so Beast Hunter and uh, Chrome's ability both affect items being stolen. Right, and you can't double dip into that. So uh, it's important when running Chrome to start the fight off and check everybody, check the enemy to see if chests are dropping. You used to be able to do that when the wave started just by going into the menu and tapping on Beast Hunter. As soon as you tapped Beast Hunter, it would target all of the enemies. And it would just it would show you all of the enemies, and you would see if there was chests flying up from them or not. And right there, with one click of a button, you could decide whether you should throw your beast hunter there or not. And that's how I used to check it, right? So let's just get in here. I'll show you guys. It's funny why I'm grinding this level right now. Uh, if I get a couple of these feathers, I'll show you guys why I'm doing this. It's kind of silly. Working on a character that most of you probably have maxed the fuck out. <laughs> so right off rip, I have to go to switch target to look around to see if this guy's ability procced at all. Right? Uh, it didn't. I don't see anything procking. Uh, you know what? Let's just go ahead and just run this like I would an actual farming level. Uh, so on wave one, I typically don't want to use Beast Hunter. Why is that? Well, because my party on wave one, nobody has all their crazy abilities charged up. And that means most of my characters aren't just going to be insta-killing everything, which leaves my rogue a little bit of room to work so I can actually manually use my rogue and try to score up some steals by doing damage to the mobs and ultimately trying to get the killing blow on the mobs with my rogue. Um, so I'm going to give myself a chance to do that. What can we throw? Oh, here's that beam. This is what's cool about Chrome is he can hit a bunch of enemies at the same time with that beam. So did we steal anything with him? I don't know, but we got some chests right there. The point is Chrome got to put in some work. Now that's not going to be able to happen because... My other teammates are just going to start one-shotting everything. So, for, fight starts. If I go to Beast Hunter, if I go to Beast Hunter, I have it highlighted right now. I can't see the enemy at all. Beast Hunter is just going on Chrome because he's the one throwing it. And that's the problem right now. I have no idea uh, whether or not chests are flying up right now. So, what I have to do is just close out and start going to Target. Target... Okay, I don't see any chests. I don't know if I missed them just from doing that because they are fast. But I'll throw Beast Hunter here. There's four targets. Why not? And then I'll try to hit as many of them as I can with my rogue. The closest thing I have to a rogue here, which is a chrome. I still have one more Beast Hunter to throw. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, and I know, I'm sure some of you are saying, well, duh, that's a no-brainer. Save it for the boss wave. Save it for the last wave. Uh, 
maybe if all of these guys dropped a chest here from Chrome's ability, but I don't see a chest going off at all. So here's the question, do you throw the chest on the four mobs or do you save the chest for the boss? Uh, and personally, and this is just me and this is most of the parties that I run, I'm going to throw Beast Hunter at the mobs. Why? Because the same reason as I have for wave one. Bosses have more hit points, they're gonna be around longer, your rogue is gonna actually have time to work on them and do damage to them, and they'll be able to proc and steal that item. Especially if you're running Shinobi, right? Because by the time you get to the boss wave, it's pretty easy to have his special filled. His special has a high chance of get of stealing the item from the boss, and then Shinobi, you want him to get the killing blow on the boss anyway, because he's going to have a great chance of getting the actual kill drop from the boss. So uh, it's just a solid play. And from from what I've noticed, Shinobi, uh, yeah, he gets it done, yo. <laughs> he gets it done on the boss, especially with that special of his. Um, if you have the arc so you can double tap, throw it back to back. Oh, cool. I thought maybe we could finish with Chrome special, but nah. Yeah, if you uh, if you can throw that special back to back, uh, it's a really really high chance that the boss is going to uh, drop their steel item, right? And then you just try to make sure that your rogue tries to get the killing blow. Um, you know whether you have to switch to another character that can actually fight the boss and take him down to a really low health. If it's a tough boss for whatever reason, which we normally don't have on any kind of farming level, but you never know, right? But I just want to make sure that the steel chest drops, and then I have the highest chance I can get to get the kill chest. That's what I'm going to just start calling them. Steel chest and kill chest, right? Uh, and I figured that's just the best way that I can do it. So, yeah, I just wanted to talk about this real quick. Uh, am I wrong? What are your guys' farming strategies? How are you doing it? Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know. This is interesting because last Cloudy has changed a little bit. Obviously, we got some little targeting stuff going on. Uh, and like I said, a lot of people probably didn't even notice this because, I mean, is everybody like running Chrome super hardcore? Probably not. I mean, Shinobi gets it done. Shinobi gets it done. He's just awesome at farming. A lot of people just build him up. Uh, we'll be talking more about rogues and stuff like that later uh, because my philosophy for a long time were that rogues hit a brick wall. Like there was no need to fully deck your rogue out. There was no need to waste the resources to get their strength and their attack up, their whatever, as high as possible for damage because then you were actually starting to take away your chance of actually getting an item. And back in the old Last Cloudia days, I would run rogues without weapons, right? Because that way they can get more attacks in and more crits in and more whatever's in without killing you. And therefore, they have more chance to get a chest to drop, right? They just have longer to work on the enemy. That was the idea. So I would purposely try to leave their strength stats as low as possible. I would leave stuff out of their kit. Uh, I would run them with no weapons. Right, uh, but last cloudy has changed, right? We, we have new farming levels, we have new difficulties, uh, and we actually have some fun stuff to fight. So I think they've been doing good there. I have like enough incentive to actually start working on my rogues again. So we will cover that. Um, and obviously I'm just trying to run bonus characters through here. So maybe later today I'll get my rogue party together. We can kind of start looking through them and see how far I've gotten. Um, and I, I have worked a little bit more on Shinobi, um, but I definitely want to finish him because he's just he's just great. I, I just dig him. I think he's an awesome character. Um, and speaking of awesome characters, oh, oh, I had a killer recording for Summer Princess Leona. I did. It was, you know what, here, let me give you guys just like a quick... Let me just give you guys a quick peek here. Uh, I think she's at 40 or 50 SC. I might as well I might as well just record her for a minute real quick before I actually add SC to her. 
because, because the shit was stupid, man. Let's see. Do I still have the same party configuration? I should have her in a beautiful party all by her damn self. Oh, big surprise. There she is. There she is. You know, I'm not lying. So, uh, we're going to go absolutely crush a freaking ogre. We're going to smash his head in. Uh, the cool part about this is I came in here as a joke. <laughs> oh, that's one of the best, like... It's one of the best slash cloudiest surprises you can have where you're like, oh, let's take this character into this uh, and, and, and see how much progress we need to make before we can clear something like this. Or let's see if we're even close. All right. Uh, so originally, come on, let my little Doberman out. Originally, I went into Heart of the Temple on normal mode, which is what, level 80? And... <laughs> my honest thought and we're talking about the character as is because I don't think I've worked on her since I did that recording and everything got corrupted oh everything getting corrupted okay I thought maybe she would have a chance maybe she would have a chance and that's a strong maybe right because we're going to look at the character we're talking about a 40-50 SC character and guess what we're going to go into hard I didn't think there was any point in even going into hard or even trying hard <laughs> because let's take a look at her in all her bliss and glory at level 80, uh, two and a half thousand strength. All right. She has 50 SC, 50 SC. Okay. There's all 50 of them. There's nothing special here. Oh, you know what? It was a great video too, guys, because I royally, yeah, I just did some stupid shit. I put, I for some reason thought that this Thunder Attack Rise 2 was Ice Attack Rise 2. I like, I, and, and I almost, I almost ran it that way too. I caught myself and I was like, wait, this girl doesn't do Thunder. That was the last girl. Oh shit. We need to be looking for Ice Attack. But she's got a very simple setup. Here's her equipment. She has her puncher. She has a meal's head, why not, and her accessory, and the Grana Dari ring, which I wish I would have worked on a little bit more, but hey, no big deal, no big deal, right? Uh, it is making her a little bit weaker to lightning, so we are rocking a gaping hole there at a minus 40 for the, uh, you know, for the lightning resistance, but surfers shouldn't be out there in a thunderstorm anyway. Damn it. Anyway, yeah, you, you just, you wouldn't expect her to put in that much work where she's at right now, especially considering she's kind of a buff character too. She's there to do damage, but she's also has this whole wave mechanic where she's buffing everybody, healing everybody, uh, and giving everybody more damage and more damage cap and more ice damage and more skill damage. Like all of that with this, this is what blew me away. Remember 50 SC. 50 SC. Keep that in the back of your head. 50 SC. I feel bad for him already. Here I come. Fee fi fo fum. We're going to drop a charisma. It's also nice that she comes with wholeness of body so she can he heal the blindness or whatever she's actually weak to. So what I'm doing is I'm killing 10 seconds until like my wave actually shows up. Right? Uh, and I'm just going to drop Council of 10. And here comes the fun part. Watch this boss's break bar. Um, I just didn't even know what the hell was going on until I realized, like, oh, snap. Okay, we're going to S3 and hurt everybody. And look at the boss's break bar. He's half broken off of an S3. He's fully broken off of an S3. Look at him. Uh, another thing, too... If you have 10 or more resistance to ice, she's going to give you minus 50, I believe. Minus 50%, minus 50. So I think that's really helping her. What are the birds at? Of course, the birds are at a negative for ice. Um, 
And I am rocking uh, Contract with Puck or whatever. Uh, well, Gaze of the End, sorry. That's giving everybody minus 10 to everything. But just look at this. With 50 SC, he's already done for, yo. He didn't get to charge up his hammer. He didn't get to drop shit, right? Uh, <laughs> so I was totally... And, and I don't have any breaker abilities on her, yo. I just unlocked what is stock on her tree. So I did I did not see her going in here and just being like, S2, S2, you're broke. So we're just going to go ahead and hit with the S1. S1. Ooh, they did poison us. We're just going to get back to it. We got an S2. She drops down on everybody with her surfboard. Oh, S3 is going to finish the ogre. And then, yeah, it's, it's, this wasn't even that smooth of a clear. It was kind of sloppy. Uh, but just try doing this with a 50 SC character. <laughs> oh, that was cool, though. We did get to see how the S3 can be interrupted. That's good to know. We have a special. Uh, her special will obviously annihilate the Ogre, too, especially if he's broken. And shit's going to be broken by the time you throw her special. Uh, because her break power is so freaking high. So she's a killer breaker. Right, and she's going to be boosting all ice damage and skill damage and all that. So if we take the other seasonal girl, Lily Bet, X Miss Lily Bet, and we we put these two together, it's going to be sick, yo. You got you got all the support and added damage from the the big wave ability that this girl brings to the table, right? And you have her being able to break shit instantly. And as soon as it gets broken, you can change over to Xmas Lilibet and dump her nukes and then do her basic attack spam, which you can get a shit ton of damage out of, especially against something that's weak to ice and broken to ice and you're buffed on ice. So uh, I'm going to have to do something with that, get that party together. And then that still leaves a slot open for whatever the hell you want to bring, a healer, a paladin, another ice damager, maybe an ice mage. Christine has that floating cat. So uh, I'm still just trying to figure out how I'm going to want to round that party out. But obviously right now I'm just running, I'm just running bonus levels and I'm just trying to teach her some stuff. I was really, really surprised that she could even make it through this with the limited things that I've taught her right out of the box at 50 SC. So she is going to be impressive. You're going to be able to crank out a shit ton of ice damage between her and any other ice character uh, that you have, right? So um, I, they did good here. They did good. I'm pleasantly surprised with her performance. I wasn't expecting all this. And she looks good. And like I said, she's Princess Leona. And I didn't build her other form. A lot of YouTubers and people in the community did. Good for you guys. Uh, because she is solid. She does tons of earth damage. Uh, I see her on the friends list all the time and she is fun to use and her combos They feel cool. So uh, uh, She feels cool here too literally, right? But you know what because I don't have Leona I, I Think this is what happened. This is what I opted for and this is actually what I'm working on today right because I don't have Leona which was doing earth damage like a bat out of earth hell um, I got Levi the last day he was up. I just, I did, didn't think I was going to pull it off. I was really sad about it. And then bam, we got him, right? But it's taken me a long time to work on him. Um, and we are two of these goddamn bird feathers away from just taking him to the next level. And that is where he wants to be. Right, and obviously, this is who I'm using instead of Leona for earth damage, right? This was my, this was my answer, and I definitely, uh, definitely want to work on him some more. Actually, give him another weapon. We'll put Levi to good use. So, yeah, everybody have a blast out there. I'm sure you are. Uh, it's a really, really good time to stock up on everything from one of these events being open, this is like a Sunnyvale, Sunvale castle thing where we have, you know, a, a custom LC map, and yeah, there's Sun Vessel Castle up there. There's chests that they're gonna hide. Make sure to find those. That one even had like an item. Oh, beasts fly out. Whatever party you use last is gonna be the party that you're stuck in for the beast fight, so be aware of that.
Oh, that's right. It's just Leona. Here's her with her beach ball. That's her basic attack since we didn't get to use it. Since we didn't get to use it against the ogre. That's funny. Yeah, her special attack does some special stuff too. I believe it turns into a pokey or it is a pokey. I don't know. Looks cool though. But just based off of how hard this girl shreds and everything that we see about her that she's, you know, how much buffing and support she's bringing to the team, even a little bit of healing with that wave coming and going. We're, we're going to have to see how that plays out. I also want to test a bunch of different stuff on her as far as getting SCT back from like healing abilities. Like, does that wave count as her healing? I mean, it's the wave is tacked technically one of her skills it's one of her I don't know I have to see how all that works something tells me there might there might just be something a little cheesy there it's at least worth looking into right and there's just that much stuff to work on with this girl just because she does so much uh I feel like it takes a little bit of time to see exactly where this character can be super cheesy at Right, maybe she can take some 4SC ability that really isn't doing shit for anybody else, but just because of the way she's set up and what she can do, that 4SC ability just makes her cheesy as hell, right? Like, maybe, yeah. Yeah, we've all seen it. Um, obviously, you never know. Maybe, I, I was even thinking, hey, can she spike that volleyball like Lilibet can do her basic attack? Oh, that would just be stupid retard. <laughs> Oh, that would be funny if she just spiked that volleyball over and over again. So the point is we're not going to know about this stuff until you know people actually play with this character and just find this stuff out. Uh, but so far, so good. She does look pretty solid, I do have to say. Uh, I wasn't really going out of my way to get her. I was just wanting to collect the arc. Oh, there's one of those feathers. Oh, and don't forget those. Always level these up as soon as you can when the event starts. I should have done this earlier. Uh, it does require the event coins, but uh, you level it up when the event starts so that obviously it's going to be there longer to produce more energy for you as the event goes on, right? So yeah, make sure to check this thing over. I, I got in here, I ran some stuff, but I know I, I looked over a lot of things. I haven't even really checked the shop in here. Okay, cool. None of the stuff I really need. So, uh, the big ones are the ability tower. That's great. And the limit break tower is huge. The limit break tower is where it's at. And obviously, make sure to go to the monster collector's manor to get all of the quests, right? There, we just got some orbs. And we just got some more gold for the event. Uh, but yeah, I think the biggest thing is the limit break. These things are still a pain in the dick to get. Obviously, as you can see here, I've been running one of them, right? I've been running this one to get the feathers. And with the last one I just found, I'm at four. I'm at four. So I have one more to go. Uh, and then I'm going to be like... I gotta say, I grind the hell out of the Limit Break Tower, because, uh, like, it's the best way to go to get these. A while ago, I was like, I didn't, I felt like I didn't have much to do in Last Cloudy. I was looking at Levi, and I was like, should I start grinding out the Limit Break fields? Um, and I was just like, no, no, it's gonna take forever. I'm, I'm, I'd probably still be grinding till right now, and I would probably have, like, two or three of these or something like that. Instead of being able to go in here and run this four or five times and get all four or five uh, of the feathers that you need. So, to me, the Limit Break Tower here, this is the biggest time saver and this is where I will spend most of any free time that I have. Also, because I have so many characters sitting around um, you know that, that need these mats, but obviously the next one to go is the Ability Tower. Right, This is the best place to stock up, obviously, on all of these uh, ability crystals, right? 
and obviously they're going to limit you to three plays per day. So you don't want to skip that. Uh, like even if you're not going to log on and play, just log on and run this crap on auto real quick. Get your three runs in every day. Anytime I miss one of these, I'm like upset about it the next day. I, I realize I'm like, oh damn, I didn't run that. Ah, that's it's it's actually a lot of resources that you're missing out on by not by just not running through this uh, three times a day. So take full advantage of it while it's open. That's my best advice to anybody just walking into Last Claudia. Uh, it does look good over here. LC's looking good. Uh, you know they're doing something with Guild. We at least have something to fight in there and a bunch of resources we can get out of there right so steps in the right direction steps in the right direction it's what we want to see and the new character is gnarly so all good news all good news today and i will see you out there later folks